Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co, and today I'm reviewing an Age Contrived from Bellows Intent. An Age Contrived is a 1-5 to five player Euro game of, well, a whole lot of things going on. Before we dive into the game, this is a prototype, all rules, components, all that stuff, subject to change, and I'll have a link to the crowdfunding campaign down below. With that out of the way, Age Contrived, Un-Age Contrived, is a game in which you are trying to... I don't even know how to best describe this. You are trying to build out a variety of structures on the board. You're going through the process of trying to contribute towards those structures. Eventually, once all these structures are built, which will vary, the number of structures will vary based on the player count. It's going to be one plus the number of players. So a four player game will have five structures, a five player game will have six structures, etc. Once all of those structures are built, you will eventually see who has the most points and that player will win the game. Along the way, you're basically going to be taking every single turn, you're taking one of two possible actions. You're either, and this is where the uh, little player aid is very, very helpful over here, you're either going to be taking an advanced turn or an action turn. On an advanced turn, you are effectively setting up your grid over here, and on an action turn, you are cashing in on that grid. Now, this is a game that's going to be a bit hard to teach because, well, it all works. It all works really well, but it's a little convoluted to actually explain everything offhand. So let's take a step back before we get too, too much into the advanced turn versus an action turn. The general idea is you're going to be taking actions with your energy over here in order to place those energy onto the board in a variety of ways that will help you out. The core idea is for a large part of the game, you're going to be trying to get energy onto those structures to contribute towards those buildings. So for example, we have these structures over here, 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 here. These structures, when they are built, will snap on to the respective boards, for example, this over here will snap on over here, I believe. There we go. And once the last piece of the last structure is on the board, that will trigger end game. By putting your energy onto these structures, when you eventually fill the slots on one of these pieces, you will get a variety of benefits for having put those pieces there, including getting your pieces into the actual energy zone of that structure, of that monument there. So from there, you're taking actions on your player board that will help you get those energies out. That's one of the things you're going to do. Over here, players, I'm gonna take these off for a second, but players are gonna have these energy boards over here. Not energy boards, I don't know why I said that. Player boards over here, in which you'll be taking actions from, from which you can activate any of these actions here, which correlate to the action spots here. There's gonna be small little tokens that give you the various actions you can take, and you can upgrade them to a variety of, well, upgrade tokens to give you stronger, more beneficial actions. Just to go through some of the examples over here of how this works, over here, I can go ahead and exhaust this energy back to my exhaust pool over here in order to take the action on this, which is to launch one of the energies of these two correlating spots. That's going to be because this specific symbol says one time launch from these two spots. So I can take one of these energies and put it onto the board. And you can put it into a few different areas. You can load it into a dimensional portal. That'll be helpful over here because a dimensional portal is going to allow you to buy these improved action tiles. You can also go ahead and load it onto one of the achievements if you have that achievement. And you can also load it onto a monument, which is what I'll do now. I'll take the matching energy type. I'll match the energy. I'll put this down. And now I've built one of those. Now that's part of an action turn, but an action turn isn't done when you take one action. An action turn is done when you decide to stop taking actions, which might be after one. Or in this case, I want to go ahead and take more actions, again, using the bottom energy that I have available to take more actions. Now, this action over here is going to let me to launch energy from these spots here, but I don't have anything in those spots, so that won't help me right now, which means maybe I want to hold on to it, maybe not, we'll see. But I could go ahead and exhaust it to recharge this token over here, which will help me take a stronger advanced turn. So I'm going to do that for right now, and I'll exhaust this energy. And then lastly, over here, we have this energy which allows us to either rotate two energy amongst different places on the board that's already placed, or alternatively to buy some of these action tiles we talked about for the energy cost shown on those tiles. Because we currently have one energy at dimensional portal, even though we can buy up to two tiles, I'm going to choose to buy only this one. So I'm going to exhaust this energy to buy one tile, returning my energy from the dimensional portal, and taking this tile off to the side, and then replacing one of my current tiles out of the game. You can do one of the ones in the slot over here, you can do one of the other ones. That's going to be an example of an action turn. The game will proceed, it'll come back to me, and then I'll take an advanced turn. On an advanced turn, you're going to take one of these tiles, you're going to slide it into your board. So for example, I'm going to take this, I'm going to slide it into my board, which is going to slide out from the other side this tile. Any energy in the tile would be exhausted, it goes to one of my two exhausted tiles, and then I'm going to load it with energy. Although first, I'm going to choose to flip this, to exhaust this, to be able to load a second tile in here, which will give me some more flexibility, knocking this one out again, and again, I still have five here, but then I'll go ahead and load those tiles with new energy, and you'll notice that 
these tiles have extra spots. The bottom spot over here means I can take this action twice when I go ahead and have energy there because I have energy there. Now you could choose specific energies, which you will want to do as you pick up the game. But at first, it's a little bit much to, to concentrate on that. So don't worry about the type of energy so much just yet. Over here, I loaded two of those in the top energy. In fact, I'm actually going to go ahead and load two of these, being mindful that this monument over here, this piece, requires two of that type of energy. And that's going to be my turn. That's an advanced turn, goes to the next player, and they go ahead and they take their turn. That's the general process of what's going on here. You're going to be taking actions with the bottom energy in order to activate the top energy, which often involves shooting it out to the auto to the board, but a lot of other things are happening in the game, and a big part of this game comes down to the area control of completing monuments. You see, when you do complete a monument, players one at a time, whoever contributes to the monument, are going to have an, a choice between taking the monument ability or between taking an energy from the reserve over here. As the game progresses, your energy is slowly leaving your pool, and it's going to be entering onto the board in a variety of places, and to that end, you want to get more energy, or you will quickly find yourself running off with a very depleted pool of energy where you have a hard time getting enough things done as you constantly struggle to get one or two energy in play because it's all on the board scoring you points. So over here, players who completed this monument can choose to take the specific energy shown, so for example this one, and put it into their exhausted pool, or alternatively they can take the benefit shown, there's going to be different benefits on all the different monuments, all structured around giving you certain things in the game that all will go to certain factors of ways you upgrade the game, because a big part of an age contrived is there's a ton of tableau building in this game. There's a ton of improving what's going on in your board and building and activating a stronger engine as you play through a variety of ways. The first is one we've already seen. You can go ahead and get better action tiles over here that will give you stronger, more actions, as well as symbols in the middle which will help you, because one thing we didn't talk about, well, let's not talk about it yet, we'll come back to it later, but these might generate extra actions for you as you go through the game. So that's going to be the first degree of upgrading. The second is one of the upgrade spots, if I can find it over here. This upgrade spot over here, when you accomplish and contribute toward this one, will give you the opportunity to take one of these advanced tiles, replacing it out, pulling out your specific tile that is in that slot, and putting in a slightly stronger version of that tile. That's going to be another degree of, of, of tableau building as you take stronger actions based on upgrading your board. You also have the opportunity over here somewhere. Where is it? I can't see it, but it's somewhere here. I don't know. Somewhere on the board over here, in one of these spots on the board, there's going to be the opportunity. I can't find them here. Here, but they are somewhere. There's not here, not here. Here we go. Nope, nope. Over here. I don't have the tile. That's why I can't find it. It's off to the side. There's going to be a tile over here that allows you to go ahead and gather one of these, these spots over here, which these can go into the top sections of your player board. So you can pop that down there. And the reason that helps you is once you have that there, when you take an advanced turn and you slide in new tiles, so we're going to slide in a new tile, we're going to have to exhaust this energy over here. That tile is going to slide out. But then because we have three boots lining up, we can go ahead and move our avatar on the board. Whenever you line up the symbols on an action tile with this top spot over here, you'll have the opportunity to generate different types of symbols on the board, either moving around the board or two things we haven't talked about, but these two tracks over here. So right now we'll move our avatar, we'll go one, and we can't move here because there's no link tile, so we'll turn around and then move two and three. It's not the best move, but that's because I haven't set the board up for this. I'm not playing strategically yet. I'm just trying to teach the game. So to that end, you're going to be able to lock in spots on the top part of your board, which will give you a bonus actions as you slide tiles in. You're gathering tiles that will give you extra spots, as well as these symbols, which will give you bonus actions. You're going to be improving this spot over here. And then as well as that, I feel there's one more spot of tableau building. There's your link tiles. Your link tiles are going to be your link tiles on your personal player board, which these tiles have the opportunity of going out on the board for different actions. For example, this action over here, when you build this monument, lets you put a link tile onto the board. So if you put a link tile onto the board, you grab a link tile, you put it on one of these regions that require a link until you put that there. Players cannot traverse those regions. You can put it on either side, which will give players a benefit when they land on that tile. And it'll give different players, it'll give all players the benefit, but you get to decide what goes on the board. So for example, this one is when I land on this, you can go ahead and take an upgraded action, which I will likely benefit from right now, but as players slowly wander around the board, they will have the opportunity to also land on it and go around the board. To that end, it's also going to unlock an ability on your personal player board. Not only are you putting something down onto the main board that starts to join the various regions and give players benefits as they step onto them, you're also going to be upgrading abilities, adding abilities you have, 1, 2, and 3, which are unique and asymmetric to the players that will give you different benefits and or point scoring that you get to have another way of upgrading your tableau. That's basically what's going on here. To do a bit of a recap there, because I know it's a lot, and I know it takes a lot to absorb, this is one of those games where I learned the game and I didn't know how to play it until I actually started playing it, at which point I had a much better idea because I actually had to play it. But the general idea is you're working with a pool of energy and you're working with a personal player board of which you're going to be alternating, taking turns between prepping that player board versus finalizing the various actions, take a bunch of actions in a row that help you get things down on the board. Much of what you do is going to be focused around trying to get your energy into the dimensional portal, where you can use it to improve your tableau 
over here, taking stronger actions, where you can put it onto various monuments so that when the monuments are completed, you can go ahead and get various benefits, such as improved actions or extra action spots on the top, or alternatively extra energy, which you'll need. You're doing all this so you can get as many points as possible because you're going to get points for five different things in the game, which is a good way to slowly finish off how this works. Again, I know it's a lot, but you can have five ways of scoring points in the game, all nicely tracked on the board. You're going to have these achievements over here on the far left. There are going to be three standard achievements in every single game and the two variable ones, and they're all going to give you points for achieving certain things. So for example, this one is having four boots on your various action tiles in the game. And then when you do so, you'll have the opportunity to put an energy into that spot, which will reward you with two points for each energy of that type that you have bound to the board. That sounds like a very complicated thing to say. The basic idea is you're putting certain types of energy onto those tiles. And then the more energy of that type you have in other areas on the board, the better off you'll be. Definitely requires some planning, requires some playing. It'll make sense for you. Alternatively, if you're playing at a higher player count, you can simply take five points, which generally will be less if you're playing well, but sometimes will be more. So you have these achievements on the left-hand side, which will be a chunk of points. You also have abilities for your third link tile, your age three link tile, or level three link will give you benefits, again, asymmetrically, so different for different players. Over here, you have the Pillars of Civilization. The idea of the Pillars of Civilization is as your avatar moves around the board, they're gonna find themselves in different regions. And while they're in that region, or if they're on a link, then either region, they can contribute to or towards a Pillar of Civilization. There's going to be two of these, although it depends on the player count. At a uh, two-player game, you only have one of them. But there are going to be two of these available in each spot on the board. And the way these work is very often in the game, you'll have the opportunity to move up this little side track here. You'll get that through having certain symbols over here matching with different bonuses. But you also have different actions. So for example, this action lets you move your pillar of civilization up by one. You're going to be moving your token slowly up the board. And eventually, eventually gets to the top over there. At any point when it's at the top, you can choose to remove it from your board and place it into a pillar of civilization. And that the more of these you have, the more points you'll get. It takes a lot of work and a lot of planning and a lot of moving your avatar around the board, but it will help and give you a chunk of points because you can get as many, depending on how many you have, the six maximum, you can get up to 38 points for getting all six, which is a lot of points, or you can get, you know, 21 or 29 for getting four or five. So if you focus on the pillars of civilization, you can get a lot of points. You also have contributing towards monuments because this next spot is for every monument on the board. If you have one, two or three energy tiles there, you'll get three, seven or 12 points respectively. That's for each monument. So in a four monument game, that's a maximum of 48 possible points if you manage to max out all of them, which is hard because it requires 12 of your energy being on the board in addition to everything else you're doing. The way you get energy into monuments is the first way is if you contribute it towards the final piece, whenever you build a piece on the board, the person who finalized that piece gets to put a token and energy that they finalized into that spot. The second way is the same way with the political civilization. You can slowly move them up the track over here to contribute towards those spots even after they were built, giving you the opportunity to get in on spots that you didn't otherwise get in on. Again, requires a lot of planning, a lot of focus, but you should be able to get a bunch of these tokens down the board and it will help you score a lot of points. And then finally, the very last way you score points is this way over here, which over there is going to be either three, six, 10 or 15 points, depending on whether you've depleted all these energy. Every type of energy you've depleted is going to be more points until you've managed to pull all of them back, which is 15 extra points. That is basically how you play an age contrived. It is a lot. It does make sense. It works once you start playing it, but it is a lot to actually get into until then. If you follow everything I said, congratulations, that's impressive. I had no idea how to play this game until I read the rulebook twice and started to dive into it, which is a good time to start off with ease of play. Ease of play on this game is tough. Everything works and it works well. And I have a high opinion of the game. I'll save that for you right now. We'll come back, check out final thoughts if you want. But the main thing I'm gonna be critical of is the fact that this game is a lot to take in because a lot of the things you're doing don't necessarily feel intuitive. It means that you have a rule book that's in front of you. You learn the rules. Everything kind of makes sense in terms of the words, but it doesn't necessarily cohesively click until you start playing. You're trying to upgrade your tableau in a bunch of different ways, and there's a whole bunch of actions that are going on, and it all starts to make sense and click as you start doing it, but until that point, it is a lot to manage. This is a game that both in terms of myself learning it, as well as the multiple times that I have taught it, I have found that everyone involved has not really understood until they're like three or four turns in, and they start to see all the engines at work. That does not make it, and that does not stop it from being a great game, but it does mean that there's a barrier to entry in terms of the absorbability and the ease of just jumping in or understanding or even teaching this game. Past that, the playtime varies. I found that you can knock out a game in under two hours if you're playing with uh, players who are not AP prone, analysis paralysis prone. But if you have players who are taking their time and you're playing at anything above three players, then it'll start to go over two hours. As far as what I like, don't like, and can see others not liking, first of all, the tableau building, starting with what I like. 
first of all, the tableau building. The tableau building in this game is insane and intense, and it's because it gives you so many ways to do it. You're constantly, this this whole thing is your puzzle. And it's worth noting, I'm playing with the deluxe version over here. That means I have some of the cool metal trays. I don't know everything that will be there, deluxe, non-deluxe. I know that there's a fun, fancy way to get your name engraved on the box. Yes, I have a Alex Radcliffe Board Game Co. on the box over there, which is really, really super cool. Cooler in the final game, because this is a prototype that is not as uh, long-term useful, although honestly, this could basically be a final game, the quality of the components here, and this is this is insane. But either way, you have these metal trays over here. Fun fact over here, there's also a cool little system. Let's move these things out of the way. There's a cool little system that isn't necessarily used, depends on your table. Let's move things. If we go ahead, whenever you go ahead and pull these back, if you need to release these tiles over here, let's go ahead and show you. Just like that. That didn't work as well as I thought because it's not on the board over there. Let's try to do it over here. So we do this here. We just do a light stream back, and then we got a little piece shooting off across the board. It's very cool, but you need to have your board set up in a certain way, or it's basically either not going to have enough space to shoot out, or too much space, and go way across the board like it just did. Either way, point is it's very cool, but functional will depend on your table. Past that, though, this is your main engine of operations. You're going to be trying to build and upgrade this in a variety of ways, and there are a variety of ways to do so. The different ways and types you can upgrade your tableau gives you so much agency over what and how you do it. Every single time you finish a monument, every single time you contribute towards one of the pieces of a monument, you are being offered a choice. Do you take more energy, or do you start trying to grab tokens and pieces and benefits and actions and links and all these things that will just make the game stronger and more powerful for you? It is very rewarding in just the four different ways of upgrading Tableau. Your links, your pieces on the top over here, your action tiles, your action tokens, every single thing in this game is another way of trying to make yourself, your engine more powerful, and it gives you a large degree of agency in terms of how to do that, agency that will come into play as you try to react to other players' turns and what they are doing and how they're contributing to monuments. One thing we haven't even talked about is the fact that energies have different types, which is not just relevant for being how you place them onto monuments, but it's also relevant for how you pull them off of monuments. When you pull energy off of a monument after contributing, there's an activation of that energy, an activation that depends on the type, whether it bounces from monument to monument, because they could do that if they're the right type, or whether it starts to go towards moving up certain tracks, or alternatively whether it goes straight into your action board. The way you place your energy and the way you choose to act on your engine, and we haven't even talked about your own personal energy type, which will come into play based on activating Link 1. When you first uncover Link 1, you have your own personal energy tokens where every player has an asymmetric aspect to that energy token. It just results in a very compelling puzzle with asymmetry across the various factions with incredibly tight decisions as far as how you try to upgrade and improve your engine and the table presence. The table presence is... It's also worth noting, the table presence is something else. The table presence is very much intense over here as far as the, the combination of the board itself, the, the giant metal trays, the various monuments, uh, the miniatures, everything here going on is a lot. I will say I was not compelled by the table presence when I first saw this game. When I first reached out said, can you cover it? I was like, actually, there's a mix of too many things going on and I don't really love the way it looks. And it has very much grown on me. Although I do not like the fact that you have these giant metal spikes that have to go into the board and doing initial setup, it is a bit of a pain to actually get those in play. I don't know if the final version, if that's how it's going to play out or not. It does the job, it works, and it's very cool, but it's a slight annoyance as far as actually setting it up. But overall, the asymmetry, the tableau building, the action selection, the tight engine, it's just a very, very rewarding experience. If you like Euro games, this is a very intense, tight Euro game. As far as what I don't like, the biggest thing is going to come down to that teach aspect, but also more than that, even playing it. To me, there's no connection between theme and mechanics in this game. To me. I'm saying the word to me specifically. I don't know how that will play out to others, but for me, what you're doing in this game has no connection whatsoever towards what's actually happening. You have an avatar, they're wandering around the board, they're rebuilding things, but you have this very compelling puzzle that in no way mechanically ties to anything that's actually happening, it makes no sense. You have action tokens, you can move this energy versus that energy, and you can shoot off your board and place it here, and none of it, none of it has any mechanical sense, thematic sense, none of it has any thematic sense as far as what it's doing. Mechanically, it is brilliant, it is beautiful, it is incredible, it is tight, well-balanced, mechanically, it is everything. Thematically, it is so disassociated from what's going on that it makes for not only a harder teach, but also I'm slightly less compelled as far as the overall experience of why I'm doing the things I'm doing. It just feels like upgrade stuff, because that will make you better, and I do like that. Mechanically, it's brilliant, but there's no connection between the theme and mechanics for me personally, which takes me out of my degree of investment in the experience and adds a barrier of entry to learning the experience. Contributing to building monuments. When you contribute to building monuments over here, I expected it that you have these monuments over here. I expected you'd have to have your avatar in the region in some way, and from what I can see from reading the rulebook again and again, there's no, there's no limitation to that at all. You can contribute to any monument whatsoever, which has this weird aspect of you have an avatar in play, but you can do whatever you want as far as 
place in the monuments out. And you can place your links wherever you want. Your links can go on the board wherever they want. Does your avatar matter? Yes, your avatar manager matters for when you contribute towards a monument that's already been built, as well as for when you are trying to create a political civilization. And then stepping on links will give you abilities. So you have this aspect where half the things you do in the game does matter in the positioning of your avatar, half the things does not. Again, that's the mechanical aspect, that's just the mechanical versus thematic aspect of the game where it works, but it pulls me a little bit out of the experience. And then lastly, I'd say the energy types, and I don't know if this is really something I don't like, it's just a lot to take in. The types of energy as you build out your board, it's a lot to think about, and the way you pull back your energy and get certain benefits from that energy, it's almost one step too much on top of an already intricate and advanced game. I like it, so I'm not really saying take it out, I just think it's a lot to take in, at least initially. As far as what I can see others not liking, first of all, your energy pool can get very tight very quickly. As you play through the game, if you do not build up your energy pool, if you don't pull it back, if you focus on all the cool things, like I did my first game, you will find yourself entering the later half of the game and finding yourself unable to optimize your engine because all your points are on the board so you can no longer take efficient actions on your engine over here. You have to get some degree of energy back. It's something that, again, I, I know all the shiny things are cool, I like them, but you have to balance taking both the shiny things as well as building up all the cool actions and action tokens and all that. Having the coolest car in the world doesn't help you if there's no one there to drive it. I probably could have come up with a better analogy, but it does work to a degree. That's basically what happens over here. To a certain extent, you can build out the coolest car and then you don't have the energy to actually drive that engine around in this game. So that's something you have to be mindful of. And secondly, I'd say that this game, I played this at, so as far as the player count, I think this works at two player, but I think it's significantly better at three and four, and I haven't played it at five, so I can't comment on that, but it works as a two player experience. It does do fine, but I think it really needs that third and fourth player for the just the amounts of stuff that will be happening on the board, for that extra monument, for more link tokens that let your leaders have more you know, aspects of upgrading or taking actions. I think it just works better at three and four players, even if it is functional at two. I almost wish, and it's possible they have something that I missed, I don't know, but I almost wish there was like an additional level of two player setup in the game to give you that kind of a little bit extra stuff going on, whether it's a few link tokens that enter the board, maybe when a player builds a first monument, I don't know the exact details, I feel there's, a, there's ways to have a drop more going on for the interaction at two players that would make it feel a bit better, because uh, as a Euro game, it, a lot of it does work really well at two players, but in terms of the map interaction and stuff like that, there is a degree of not as well at two as it does at three and four. As far as final thoughts on an age contrived, both things are true in this game. I think this game is brilliant. I think the game is designed incredibly well. I think it presents a very compelling uh, Euro game of trying to figure out how to optimize around building out your tableau and improving your tableau as you try to strive towards getting as many points as possible through the multiple scoring mechanics and do so better than the other players at the table. It works beautifully. And then at the same time, it's not intuitive in the gameplay and the theme and the mechanics are not well linked, which does take it down a notch for me. Despite that, that criticism, for me, it is a 4 out of 5. It's an ex... It's an excellent experience that I think is very rewarding for those who like medium to heavy euros in their collection, as long as you're okay with that thematic disconnect from the mechanics. Again, my opinion uh, exclusively there. Past that, as far as final thoughts, as far that was final thoughts. Four to five, great game with a critique that does take away from it. If, with the critique that does take away from it for me, and then as far as recommendations, recommendations, I'm gonna recommend two games that I think have very similar kind of pros and cons for me. The first is Oros. Oros is a game that, as well as it has a kind of similar puzzle, it gives me a very similar vibe as far as being beautifully well done as far as the Euro engine at work, while also kind of feeling thematically disconnected as to why and what's happening in the game. And then another one that that I also felt very similar to, and I found out later that actually was one of the inspirations for the designer for this game, is Hansa Teutonica. Hansa Teutonica is another game that I think is brilliantly well done as far as how it's executed, and then also as far as some of that disconnect for me at the same time, and that apparently was one of the inspirations for an Age Contrived, so it makes sense that it had that small degree of similar feeling to them. In any case, and until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. Hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, I hope you have a good one.